If you like the artwork I'm showing you right now, you can get in contact with the artist by their Twitter, which I have linked in the description below. I wasn't too adverse to seeing an all-new Devil May Cry. I mean, for crying out loud, people, it's a bunch of polygons and a different wig. Why are you all spurging on about it? DMC succeeds both in its story and in its combat. Sure, you may balk at Dante's trendy new haircut, or maybe even miss a little of that B-movie Devil May Cry insanity. But the heart of what makes the series so enticing and so much fun to play holds true here. Uh, so, that was underrated. What's overrated? Oh, you know what's overrated? What's overrated is shutting something down just because at first glance you're like, that's not my shit. You know, get the fuck over it. Play DMC, check out uh, anything that you judge the book by its cover. That's what they say, right? Don't judge a book by its cover. Play DMC. I'll see you next week. Let's talk about the white-haired elephant in the room. There's a lot of guys out there who'd already written this game off because Dante's hair is dark and no way. That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter at all. Because if you're bothered with the hair colour of one character in the game, then you can fuck off and play The Sims for all I care. Because that's not important. What's important is the heart behind the game and the combat and the mechanics and all the other brilliant bits of a game and to write it off because of a guy's hair. That is fucking weird. Yes, it does sound pretty weird. There were certainly no other reasons why fans didn't want to play this game. Certainly not the fact that there was an unneeded reboot when 4 did well critically and financially. A reboot by a western dev due to outsourcing? Oh, and I am sure outsourcing has a great reputation. Hmm. You know what? It really is interesting how that narrative about hair colour just falls apart when you actually think, isn't it? The whole concept that this game was so despised because of hair colour rather than something more important like the fact that it's a reboot or that the gameplay is heavily flawed or the fact that people didn't like what was done to the characters is pushed to this very day. Sixth, I believe? Yeah. If uh, we all want to forget about the disastrous DMC. I liked that game. From DMC the, was great. The oh, monsters great. at Ninja Theory. It's too easy to get great triple studio. S rank. Shut up. How dare they? <laughs> doesn't have white hair. Play, finish the game. But <laughs> how how did people manage to get annoyed about the DMC Devil May Cry like redesign of Dante? This is the thing, right? Like, I I swear, Whoop. in my mind, pe the people that were annoyed about Dante's remodeling Whoop. were threatened by him because <laughs> he was just really really good looking. Like, and he was really hot and confident. You say that as if he wasn't before. Mm. The reboot took several years to reach the sales that Devil May Cry 4 did in its first month. Those sales were fucking horrendous. That burned a lot of asses since they hoped that the reboot would be the one that is continued. There's no point in looking back. Dante has got a brand new future ahead of him, and if DMC Devil May Cry is anything to go by, it's going to be a great one. Ha! So why am I making this video? While the reboot was covered many times before, I don't think its combat mechanics were covered in as much depth as I would like. Sure, people bring up the lack of lock on how it makes you miss, but... They don't bring up how it affects directional-based moves. Or how much Angel and Demon modes are downgrades in comparison to styles. Or, hell, how bungled the controls are. People say it's a very fine entry to the series, but I just don't see it. And I want to go over the many reasons why the fanbase just don't really care for this game. And I assure you, it has nothing to do with something so small like hair colour. And why this version of the reboot? Because this is the one that was surrounded by drama. This is the one that was so furiously defended. So much so that on release, people were saying that this was a great entry. While the drama is important to cover, I won't cover in this video. I instead suggest you watch the video by Matt Muscles. He does an excellent job explaining what the hell happened with this game. 
Now, through this whole video, I want you to keep in mind something. Core gameplay versus the wider game versus why that franchise is bored. Throughout this video, I will be using Devil May Cry 4 as the main source of comparison to the reboot, since it was the most recent game until the reboot came out. So, let's begin. Before I go into what's wrong with it, I will start with the positives, because not everything in this game is bad. There are two bands who worked on this game, Noisia and Combi Christ. While I don't care for Noisia, the majority of Combi Christ's music is pretty fucking good in this game. It's the only reason why I can enjoy playing the game is its music. New to the series is not only the ability to try out new moves before buying them, but also an entirely new training room where you can practice combos whenever you feel like improving your skills. The game is also animated beautifully. Some stages have some stunning art direction. The pier, that one mission in the town, Barbarbus's world, the dream sections, and Lilith's club. I mean, well... When it isn't making your eyes ache, each time you beat the final enemy, the game goes into a slow-mo zoom which works to indicate the battle is over while providing a satisfying final blow to the whole fight. The seventh generation mostly had games that had a repetitive grey and brown look which got tiring. But this game, it's vibrant. There's so much colour. It was a nice change of pace from the usual muddy colours of that gen. While older games did introduce a camera you could move, it was strictly horizontal which meant you can only look left to right. In DMC, you can freely move the camera around in all directions. It's a fantastic change. The reboot introduced the style announcer which announces the style rank as the player raises it up which encourages the player to do better. The platforming works well here, better than prior games, which was greatly appreciated, especially since there are more platforming in this game than prior entries. Being able to take an upgrade point out of a move and apply it to another is an excellent design decision. If you felt you wasted a point on a move that isn't good, turn the move off, get the point back, and put it into something else that you find that's better, or save it for later. That's about it with positives. Now I'm going to get on to what's wrong with the game. This is more of a PS3 and 360 issue. The Devil May Cry series set a standard as far back as 2001 on PS2 for the series to be at 60 frames per second. Yet this game in 2013 is at 30? 30 FPS on a fast paced action game. Even the shit one tagged at 60 FPS. Yes, the game that's about as well thought out as a woman purchasing a male escort who's a eunuch with the gameplay as thrilling as viewing pensioners watching grass grow, actually hit 60 FPS. Oh wait, I, I better not talk about the frame rate too much, because apparently those who do are losers. Seriously, whose bright idea was to write that bloody article? Sure, there were areas that looked lovely. Really, there's some great looking levels here, but if I were to choose between smooth frame rates and responsive controls, or pretty scenery, 
I want the thing that actually adds to the important part of the game, the gameplay. Because of the lower frame rate, combat just feels sluggish, thanks due to the lower frame rate, which will negatively impact how a fast-paced game like Devil May Cry feels. So the fact that a game from 2001 could nail this, yet a game from 2013 couldn't, was just really disappointing, especially when the series set a standard. The devs wanted their reboot's core combat mechanics based around a stand system like their own game, Heavenly Sword, which was to replace the series' already established style system. But was it an improvement? Styles is a system in DMC4 that allowed you to change between four combat modes on the fly, with the fifth being an added weapon. A style changes the style button's function. Trickster expands upon your movement abilities by giving you both dashes and teleportations. Swordmaster expands on your melee moveset, this gunslinger that expands upon your gun moveset, and Rolgad, a style in the hands of a casual, is near fucking useless. But, in the hands of a skilled player, makes you untouchable, and are rewarded with the strongest attack in the entire game. You can see what style you're using in the top left corner next to the health bar, and with what color Dante flashes alongside an audio cue. This is all topped off with six weapons you can quickly cycle through. Dante without styles has 35 moves. Style switching at an extra 41. Altogether, you have 76 moves you can use at any time on the fly, thanks to style switching and weapon switching. Styles opened up so much potential that the player has at their disposal. You could stick to a single style with the odd change now and again, like a certain pig roach scrub, or you can change your styles mid-combat while quickly switching weapons to create your own combo, like a skilled badass. Mastering this system takes time, but when you get there, you will destroy mobs, bosses, and your hands. Let's move on to the reboot's Angel and Demon modes. You can change between a Twink mode, which lets you use an Angel weapon, a chain that pulls you two enemies, an air boost, and a double dodge. You have the neutral mode, which gives you your guns and sword, a double jump, and a normal dodge. There's the Edgy Boy mode, which gives you a demon weapon, a chain to pull enemies towards you, a time dodge that boosts attack damage for a period of time, and bugger all in the air. To sum it up, we lost styles just to get angel and demon modes, which are basically weapon switching with quirks. But hey, the weapon list has increased from 6 to 9, so surely there's more moves, right? Let's compare. With weapon switching and style switching, Dante and DMC4 had 76 moves. How about the reboot? I mean, the devs wanted to combine Dante and Nero's movesets together. Nero's Devil Bringer was changed into the chain and several attacks from Nero were borrowed over. This game was worked on for a while, probably since January 2010. And plus, there's the nine weapons instead of the six from Devil May Cry 4, so there has to be more. Are you serious? The last game we had six weapons, but 76 moves. We have 9 weapons now, but only 57? How the fuck did you manage to give us more weapons, but less moves? That's just fucking funny. <laughs> Seriously, how? How? Seriously, how? In older titles, Devil Trigger transforms you into a badass looking demon and it increases damage, speed, slowly heals, and, most importantly, modifies moves like Kick 13 to have more kicks, Stinger now passes through multiple enemies, and modifies styles like increasing the number of consecutive dashes and teleports in Trickster. You earn Devil Trigger quickly through combat, style ranking, and taunting the enemy. This meant it wasn't just something to save up to use as a backup to kill harder enemies. It was, rather, an option that expanded upon your moveset. It's back in the reboot, but very different. The damage is massively increased, but your speed isn't. Your attacks aren't modified, which means 
you have little reason to use it on small to medium enemies, since it adds nothing to the move list. It's also a pain to incorporate into combat, because it levitates enemies into the air. So now, if you want to kill them effectively, you have to use the one weapon that pulls them together and attack them all at once. If not that, you have to attack them one at a time. Why use it if I'm just limited to one weapon to get the job done effectively? It takes far too long for a full charge, especially since you can't speed it up with taunts, since they remove taunting from the game altogether. Since all of this discourages you from using it often, I just find myself using DT so much less than in other titles, for all these reasons stated. Better to save for the chunguses and, uh, pissy porcupines. His Devil Trigger, instead of being a cool combination of a demon and angel, since in the reboot he's half angel and half demon instead of half human and half demon like in the original games, instead, they're the inspired decision of doing a color swap to make him look more like classic Dante. People, uh, really were dumb enough to think a redesign is a core grievance that people had on this game. In any case, this design is boring and uninspired. Weapons in older titles were balanced because each one had a decent amount of moves without making one more useful than the other. For example, in DMZ4, you did not use your hand weapon over the sword because while Echidna had some of the strongest attacks in the game, Rebellion was not only faster, but had plenty of moves that were useful and easy to use. The more unique weapon, Lucifer, while needing more thought, once understood, can result in great setups on the ground or mid-air, which allowed you to place them in enemies one at a time, create a trap around you, set up a wall of spikes, or send them out in a volley. You could either wait out the detonation or set it off yourself with throwing rows. Same thing applies to guns. While the shotgun deals more damage and stopping power, the pistols have more range, a great rate of fire to stun lock, more moves in Gunslinger, and most importantly, keeps your airborne away from the enemies on the ground. Now, with the reboot. You do not need to use the axe much once you get the Hellboy hands, since the fists are faster with good damage, along with a lot more attacks that are useful. The only moves worthwhile on the axe is Trinity Smash, due to it being one of the strongest attacks in the game, and Flush because it deals good damage at range. Once you get the Glaives, you can just throw away the Scythe, because the Glaives have longer range, better crowd control capabilities because they can group enemies together and hit them at once. Plus has more aerial movement options with caliber. The only time the sight is useful are a few occasions where you want to isolate a particular enemy in the air and spam the same two attacks over and over until they're dead. The shotgun is the only good gun in the entire game because it has both power with good rate of fire Ebony and Ivory's damage were nerfed compared to other games, while making its ability to keep Dante in the air as he shoots pointless, because the chain grabs and other weapons can do the same while applying more damage. There's also the mini explosive pistol taser thing, really not worth using compared to the shotgun. It's based around setups, but with much less options compared to a weapon that served the same function, which was Lucifer. The Devil May Cry games since 2001 use a manual hard lock-on system. This meant your player character will face the enemy or location you're locked onto and will only attack in that direction. But in the reboot, they removed lock-on. With this change, there's a soft lock instead for any ranged moves. Because of the soft lock system, there's been many instances of me trying to attack a standard enemy, but... Instead, I go into these chainsaw fucks instead. Or I try to use stinger range and I keep fucking sliding into the wrong enemy, like one of those fat chunguses instead. Overall, just fuck the soft lock on system. It sucks ass. Color coded enemies were added to the game, and this addition wasn't very liked. It was 
far too restricting, with red enemies only dying with demon weapons, and blue only being killed with angel weapons. I have seen arguments that said it pushes you to use different weapons, which doesn't make much sense when you realize it restricts you to only two out of eight weapons that you have in total. This goes against the very appeal of Devil May Cry's combat, which is to fluidly use any weapon and move you want to use without restrictions to make your own string of combos. Devil May Cry boss fights are either huge bastards, or small encounters that offer more of a duel, which is when the game's difficulty usually peaks. The reboot uses this formula too, and we will see to what effect. Most games either handle large bosses by making them a puzzle, which is fine. It gets the player to think on how to bring down this huge cunt. Though, this depends on how well the puzzle's made. Then there's the worst alternative. A non-active boss who, rather than move around freely, they do the bare minimum to move, so the fight isn't broken if the player moves out of reach. They have slow telegraphed attacks, where after you hit their hands over and over, which can be fucking dull. They don't test the player's skills with the game's systems because of the boss's limited ability and are altogether really boring. More like set pieces than bosses. Devil May Cry generally does it by making these large bosses a active entity that responds accordingly to the player's distance and actions. When far away, they'd either rush to you or use ranged abilities. They can use area effect moves to push you back, they'll retreat away and hit you with range. If you get behind them, they'll either attack backwards, quickly spin around, or move away. Devil May Cry 4 had 9 boss fights, sadly, due to budgeting issues. They couldn't give Dante unique bosses or stages, with one terrible exception. This meant you have to repeat 4 of Nero's bosses. Most of the 9 are great encounters, with just a few exceptions. Seriously Capcom, a FUCKING WINDOW! While it's very clear that not giving Dante unique bosses outside the savior, which was shit, was a missed opportunity due to poor management from the higher ups, the reboot could very well offer some of the best fights in the entire series. Let's see if they did. Half of the bosses are non-active fights. Fuck! <sighs> they follow the same formula that I already mentioned. Because of this, Mundus and the Succubus are nearly the same with them both consisting of slow telegraphed swats, followed by smashing their hands. The only unique thing this game brings to this formula is a platform denial attack that forces you to swing to a separate platform. Can they punish you when you keep moving from platform to platform? <laughs> nah, just keep doing it. That can't do shit. Bob's fight is the most visually interesting boss out of everyone without hurting your head like a certain fucking baby. That I will cover later. While he is interesting visually, mechanically, he is pretty simple. Dodges lasers, stun him by smashing some panels, attack his head, then get sent into a separate sequence that breaks the pace of the fight, break out, Rinse and repeat. These fights are meant to be about spectacle rather than testing the player's skill, which is unlike old entries. The older titles had bosses like Phantom, Beowulf, and Burial. That spectacle due to scale. Thing is though, they still test the player because these bosses have more options at their disposal to kill you. They can move around the arena and use different attacks depending whether the player's on the ground, behind them, at a distance, or in the air. Two boss battles display the old large DMC fights where they are active, but they still fuck them up. The Hunter is really easy. You can jump in place with no timing, and he can't hit you. He's beyond passive, and you can't use the excuse 
he's the first boss on this because the other beginner bosses still kicked your ass. If you didn't put in the effort, just jump, mash buns, then you win. It's easy to parry him. Look at the fuck ups I'm allowed to get before I nail it. Just mash and you will parry. There's this little shit, the neon demon fetus. Since it involves a baby, here's a list of words and phrases I cannot say. On the threat of getting Susan, this is the hardest boss in the game. Is it because attacks are fast enough to knock out players who aren't focused? No. Is it because this literal demon spawn adapts well to how the player moves and attacks? No. Here's why. Because it fucking hurts my eyes. Literally, while the background is bright neon colors, he throws bright neon wavy fucking textures with bloom at you, making things so difficult to see and it caused me so many headaches, I had to pause. I ain't even gonna try to analyze this fight. It literally hurts to play to the point I had to put on sunglasses to no longer feel headaches anymore. Too bad I still can see from all the effects. Went from not seeing anything while in pain to not being able to see anything in a dark tint. But at least, I wasn't in pain. I'd go as far as to say this little stillborn would make a devote pro-lifer look lovingly at a coat hanger. Imagine having a boss fight, where a strat is to unironically wear shades indoors. Fuck this fight, and frankly, I was happy to see the surgical sniper rifle abortion. Now there's the last fight, Virgil. In older games, he was the hardest fight. How does this one stack up? Well, certainly not as good in comparison to Virgil fights in prior games, that's for certain. It is, however, the best fight in this game, but far too easy for our last boss. And for it to be a Virgil fight, which are some of the most brutal fights in the series. He was not only fast in those games, but he inflicted high damage, as well as having a bevy of attacks to use on you. In this game, he doesn't destroy your health. His attacks are on the slow side, and the only time it gets hard is when his doppelganger stops you from getting in the final blow. It's like a miniature puzzle that comes out of nowhere, at the very end, where the only real hint you get blue orbs that fills your DT, that is, if you were paying attention to DT at all during this fight. Why is the enemy AI so passive? It gives me Devil May Cry 2 flashbacks. At least simply walking isn't a viable dodge. When it comes to parries, you can just button mash to get them with any weapon. No timing needed. Just mash away. Devil Dodge is way too overpowered. You're meant to time your dodge while in demon mode, but it really isn't hard to time it. Once it's done, your damage is increased dramatically, and you just destroy the style ranking scale and melt away health. Especially in Devil Trigger. This game lets you start on hard difficulty, and it still felt like a breeze to get through. This game was infested with bugs at launch. For a linear action game to have as many as it did was ridiculous. The game had patches, but there's still quite a few bugs in game. Currently, in under 12 hours of playtime, I experienced five or so crashes on boot up and during play. There's bugs where you can't change your demon or angel weapon until you quit the game. <laughs> Look at the first boss. You can freeze him for fuck's sake. And worse yet, it's easy to repeat. This game needed more time before release.
Oh boy, this is gonna be a long one. I'll be using a DualShock controller when referring to controls. For the reboot, I won't see a specific button when referring to dodge. You will find out why. The older system had each button serve a different function. You cycle weapons with the triggers, guns on L2 and melee weapons on R2, style switching is on D-pad which changes what circle does, your devil triggers on L1 and lock-on is on R1. These are single presses, with the exception of lock-on which is the only hold, melee on triangle, shoot on square, style on circle, and, obviously, jump is X. Your lock-on not only makes your overall movement lock to a single enemy, or direction, but it also adds functions like dodge rolls and backflips, which happens when X is pressed while strafing or moving backwards. While locked on, attacks and styles expands and you get directional based moves. While locked on, you move the stick in one or two directions and press triangle or circle. You don't want to be locked on all the time. If surrounded, just let go of lock on and move the stick in the direction of enemies you want to attack. This system is pretty simple to get to grips with in fast paced fights, since each button has a separate and defined function. This means you won't get easily mixed up during fights because you can recognize what each button does quickly. Since you'll be holding R1 most of the time for accuracy, dodge rolling backflips happens naturally while moving as well as directional based moves on enemies. This means dodge rolls, flips and directional moves don't require separate buttons at the cost of other mechanics. Cycling melee weapons being a press means it's just a quick swipe off your index fingers. You can cycle in melee weapons even mid attack animations, while hovering your left index finger over L1 for devil trigger, and swiping it to L2 to switch your guns. It's a simple control scheme that's easy to understand. Since there isn't lock on, it meant they had to implement several mechanics differently within the game. It is said they wanted the combat to be simpler for newcomers to grasp, while having the depth of prior games, which apparently led to lock-on and styles getting cut. Did they succeed in making it simpler while keeping the depth? We shall see. Without lock-on or styles, this is now the system. Melee is triangle, circles for special moves, which were originally your directional attacks, square shoot and two other functions depending on the current mode. X is jump, a double jump, L1 is your dodge, and uh, um, R1 is also your dodge. Holding angel mode changes the melee weapon for triangle and circle to an angel weapon, gives dodge an extra dash when pressed twice, replaces double jump on X for the air dash, and makes square the angel chain. Holding demon mode does the demon equivalent to triangle, square, circle, dodge, and jump gets shit. Left on the d-pad is to change your angel weapons, right is to change your demon weapons, up changes your guns, and down does dick. Devil Trigger has now shifted to click in both analog sticks. With a stat, we now have two dodge buttons that do the exact same thing. These were implemented so pressing dodge can be more comfortable while holding either triggers. If you need a single function attached to two buttons in place of other mechanics just for the sake of comfort, then I'm sorry, then you've already failed majorly in making a control scheme along the way. Holding a trigger to use melee weapons is pretty clunky for an action game. Holding it to change what five buttons do is fucking ridiculous. You have to keep in mind which trigger does what to five buttons during fast-paced fights in each of the game's three modes. Plus, dealing with a soft lock system that isn't accurate. This makes combat feel like a mess when you're trying to weapon switch mid combos, which is kind of the thing you're meant to do in a Devil May Cry game. Three out of the four buttons on the D-pad are used to change weapons, which you are meant to use in tandem with the triggers which change weapons. Wait a minute. We have weapon switching on D-pad to change the weapons on triggers that we use to change weapons as well as two buttons for dodge. Congratulations, devs. You made the game's mechanics to be as redundant as the game's title. Lack of lock-on means directional inputs are now split between a single directional input and circle. Circle could have been a different mechanic altogether. If they kept a lock-on and wanted a dodge button, circle could have been it. 
Now, instead of pushing the stick forward and press triangle while locked on, which was quick, simple and accurate, without lock on, you double push the stick and press triangle. The lack of lock on not only means these directional attacks could miss the target, but also the input itself is now sluggish in comparison to older games. Devil Trigger being stuck on pressing in both sticks instead of a button means it's less responsive since a button is far more instant and squishing in the sticks. <laughs> this control scheme was seriously made to be simpler while retaining depth? If anything, what he did was reduce the depth and the number of mechanics while somehow making the control scheme more convoluted and clumsy than it has ever been in the series. They achieved the exact opposite of what they set out to do. <laughs> if you ask me, that's a colossal fuck up. Changing the button mapping doesn't fix these controls because you'll always be stuck with how angel, neutral, and demon modes affect five buttons. You'll always be stuck with two dodge buttons in place of two other mechanics and weapon switching to swap the weapons you're switching. I won't say this game's as bad as Devil May Cry 2, because that's hyperbolic. But the reboot isn't that good of a game like a lot of people say it is. There's far too many fundamental flaws with this game's mechanics and core gameplay. People debate which game is worse, the reboot or Devil May Cry 4. While Devil May Cry 4 is an incomplete game, the core gameplay makes up for it by having one of the best combat systems in the action genre. Since its gameplay is mainly made up of combat encounters, it meant going backwards through the game halfway through, while disappointing, yeah, still a fun time. Especially since it's with Dante who has a different system to master in comparison to Nero. Earlier on, I asked you to keep in mind core gameplay versus the wider game versus why a franchise is bored. This is where I will explain myself. The Devil May Cry games are based around combat, they're based around the battle systems, and they're based around combat scenarios. This also applies to the reboot. The wider game is based around facilitating the combat, and it's what you'll mainly be doing throughout the entire game. And the reason why this series is bought in the first place, and what made the series so famous, is its gameplay, which is based around the combat. So for the Devil May Cry games, the core gameplay is what really matters in the end. So for a Devil May Cry game to be a great entry, the actual combat mechanics and the core gameplay has to be solid. And this core gameplay is why this series is bored. The reboot, while is a complete game with a campaign that doesn't pull shit like going backwards in the game, its core gameplay leaves so much to be desired. With mechanics missing, downgraded mechanics, less attack variety, controls not being well thought through, and overall, it doesn't matter if you have good levels. If your core gameplay is lackluster, it makes the whole thing a fucking chore to play through. And this is why the reboot wasn't a good Devil May Cry game. It's also why this game bombed the way it did, and why it's not looked at very fondly by the Devil May Cry fanbase. Thank you for giving my video a watch. If you enjoyed it, then please, by all means, give it a like and subscribe. And if you wish to support me further, then you can go over to my Patreon and become a member. It would mean the world to me, especially during these ugh, trying times. Hope you have a good day, and see you next time.